Alexa here from the blog theduvalhomestead.com and today I'm going to share with you three recipes that you can make with butternut squash. squash is an amazing vegetable. Like most squashes, it's full of antioxidants and vitamins and nutrients. It's a great vegetable to have on hand for fall and into winter. I always like to pick up seasonal food and so this year I went to the farm stand like I normally do and they had so many butternut squashes that I just picked up a whole bunch of them. And so now I get home and I see butternut squashes and I think I've got to cook all of these, which is fine because they actually go a really long way and you can actually roast and puree butternut squash just like a pumpkin and then freeze it. You can store it in your fridge for a week. It's just a really great vegetable to learn how to cook. I will leave the links below this video for the free printable recipe card on the blog, which you can just print out and have the recipe and tutorial ready to go. So the first recipe is a roasted butternut squash salad. First, you want to roast your butternut squash to do this, you're gonna cut the butternut squash in half with a sharp knife. A little tip on cutting the squash is you want to put the tip of the knife in the center of the squash first and then kind of fold it downward. Remember that the squash is only thick on the outside and then it has that hollow middle part. And so once you get through the thick part, it's quite easy to just pop open. Then you need to skin your squash. So you can buy a squash peeler. You can also use a potato peeler. You do wanna make sure your peeler is pretty sharp, otherwise you won't be able to get the skin off. We're only going to use half the butternut squash for this recipe, but save the other half because I have more recipes coming. Next, we're gonna chop our butternut squash. So using a sharp knife, just chop it up into cubes. For roasting, you wanna preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So for this recipe, you're going to make a marinade for your squash. And what I really like about this recipe is that the marinade is going to become your salad dressing as well. So keep it on hand even after we use it to marinate the squash. So for the marinade, you're going to use half a cup of olive oil, a tablespoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, two tablespoons of maple syrup, a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, half a teaspoon garlic powder, and a teaspoon of dried oregano. Then just put all of your chopped butternut squash into the marinade and mix it around. Spread it on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper and put that in the oven at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes. Then you'll remove it from the oven and let that cool. Then you'll just put your salad together. I like to use kale for this, but in this case, we only had kind of a mixed green salad butternut squash, and then some other really good toppings are almonds and shredded cheese. And then you can use your leftover marinade for the salad dressing. Now a little tip if you want this to go further is to just take the roasted butternut squash and put it in the fridge and then you can redo the salad throughout the week if you have leftovers. I apologize if my lighting gets really off right now. We have the sun coming in and out and so it might be super bright. Okay, the next recipe is a classic butternut squash soup. This is a really hearty and warming soup that is perfect for a cold day. You get home and you just have that cold in your bones and you really need to warm up. It also is super nourishing. It's got bone broth, it's got butternut squash, it has onion and garlic. So it's definitely an immune boosting food, perfect for the fall and winter when you're more likely to have a cold or whatnot. So for this recipe, you're gonna use the other half of that butternut squash. Now here you will see I am chopping the butternut squash up before roasting it. You don't have to do it this way. You can also just put the entire half of the squash in the oven with the skin still on. And then once it's finished roasting, you can just scoop the squash out. And I actually prefer that way because it's easier. You don't have to do the chopping. I was chopping in this case because I think I was just chopping a lot of squash up to put in my fridge to have for the week. 
You also take one whole onion and one whole head of garlic or six cloves of garlic. Put them all in a baking dish, drizzle with olive oil and salt, and then put them in the oven at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. This gives that roasted flavor to the soup as opposed to chopping up the onion and putting it in the soup sauteing with olive oil or something like that. So next we're going to combine all of these with an immersion blender. First you're going to pour in about four cups of bone broth. If you don't know how to make your own bone broth yet, I have a tutorial and a blog post at thedevelophomestead.com. It's very easy and it's so much healthier and more cost efficient than buying it from the store. You just take a whole chicken and put it in the Instant Pot and add water and apple cider vinegar and then you have bone broth and it will go a really long way all season. Next you're going to add your seasonings. You'll add a tablespoon of salt. Of course you'll add less salt if you are using store-bought bone broth because Oftentimes, store-bought bone broth already has salt in it, whereas when I make it, mine doesn't have salt, so just know that when you're reading the recipe. If you like your soup on the thicker side, you will use less bone broth. If you like it more thin and soupy, you can use more bone broth. A teaspoon of sage, half a teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of ginger. And then my favorite ingredient is a pinch of cinnamon. This gives it that really festive taste, and you might like to add more if you really like cinnamon. So you use an immersion blender to combine all of these together into a soup. Then just simmer your soup on medium for 10 to 15 minutes and serve it with some fresh cheese on top. Another really good topping is bacon bits. You can do dried parsley. Okay, the last recipe is beef tacos with butternut squash. I'm always looking for ways to make my recipes go further and add really nu nutritious vegetables like butternut squash in something we already enjoy, like a taco. And what's great about this is it's a full meal with the beef and the squash. It's very filling and super nutritious and just really warming for the fall. Whereas when I make tacos in the summertime, they're lighter with more cilantro, maybe some fish. And so it's the same kind of taco recipe, but catered to a more fall flavor. So this one, again, we use half a bar nut squash and we're gonna roast it the same way we roasted it for the salad. So you're gonna cut it in half and take the skin off and then cut it into small cubes. Drizzle it with olive oil and some salt and put it in the oven at 375 for 20 minutes until they become soft. Also add about a teaspoon of paprika sprinkled across the barnet squash before roasting. Now while that's happening, you're going to saute some more vegetables. You can use a cast iron for this. In this video, I'm using an Instant Pot. You're going to drizzle with avocado oil and turn it on a medium high heat. You're gonna add one pound of ground beef and one onion chopped up. Let that saute until the beef is fully cooked. Then add a whole head of garlic or six cloves chopped up. You always add your cloves after your onion because garlic takes much less time to cook. So. If you add garlic at the same time as onion, you will probably burn the garlic. Now you're gonna make your taco seasoning. In a small bowl, put about a quarter cup of water, a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of chili powder, and a teaspoon of dried parsley. Mix that up and then add it to your beef mixture.
And then you can add all of your butternut squash cubes to the beef mixture and stir. And then you're ready to make your taco. You take your tortilla or whatever taco you like, add the beef with the onions and the garlic and the butternut squash and then top it with avocado or sour cream. In this case, I use cheese and lettuce and salsa. All right, well, I hope these three fall recipes were delicious and you look forward to cooking them on your fall menu. I will leave the links below this video for the free printable recipe card on the blog, which you can just print out and have the recipe and tutorial ready to go. But I will say once you cook these recipes and you get the hang of cooking with butternut squash, you will just start naturally including it in your recipes. What I like to do is roast a whole bunch on one day and then I have it just ready to go. Let me know in the comments below what you like to cook with butternut squash. If you're brand new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. Every week I post a new farm to table recipe and homemade natural living from our homestead here in Duval. Thank you so much for stopping by at the Duval Homestead.